Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I'm super excited. My friend Nelson is with me today and we're going to be talking about destiny and purpose and a little bit how it relates to the prophetic. Um, so Nelson's going to be sharing some of his story and I'm super excited because the Holy Spirit actually asked me to have Nelson on the stream and he gave me a prophetic word to share uh, b before we get started. So Nelson, thank you so much, man, for being here. Could you here. just let people know how they can uh, follow your channel and where they can find your contact info? Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, everybody on Troy Black's channel, you guys are awesome. Uh, I, Troy, I had a great time having you on the Glory Podcast a while back, but those of you it was who awesome. connect with us, uh, the, the YouTube channel is The Glory Revival. Um, we also have a revival center here located in Dallas, uh, Fort Worth. Texas. Uh, we've been hosting Revival for about 50 weeks now. We're about to hit our one-year anniversary in about two to three weeks. Uh, just seeing so many souls saved, 776 baptisms in less than a wow. year. Uh, so we're really in Revival and the things that Troy has prophesied concerning that, um, you know, we're seeing some of that thing, those things come to pass with the Glory Revival as well. Uh, but we, you can just subscribe to my YouTube, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, all those things. Man, well, Nelson, I'm so excited about what God is doing through you. And, and I know, Nelson, you've got some really cool content to share with us today about destiny and about purpose. I want to share this word the Lord gave me first before we jump in. Uh, the Lord spoke to me very specifically about this video. Um, and this is an encouragement. If you're listening to this and you have any of these questions or, you're, you're, you, know, or you want to know more clearly what's, what's my purpose, what's my destiny, this is an encouragement, I believe, from the Holy Spirit that is going to help. This is what the Lord specifically said. He said, just come in, just enter my presence with joy and rest in your heart and you will see what I have prepared for you to do. And then he said, I will begin to give you glimpses of light. And then he said, I hold your purpose in my hands. I hold your purpose in my hands. It's right here with me and I will show it to you as you abide with me in the secret place. That's where I'm at. It's where I can be found. And I, I, man, I love that idea so much of uh, as you abide with me, you know, Jesus said we can do nothing apart from him. And this is what the devil gets us with is any thought we have of, of finding purpose or meaning in life apart from Jesus and apart from being in him and walking with him is, is a lie, <laughs> you know, but the devil gets us with it so often. But I believe this word, the Holy Spirit is just calling us back to that secret place of abiding in Christ. And he also used this phrase, I will begin to give you glimpses of light. And I got this impression that light here, the Lord's using that as an idea to represent an eternal impact. So this is what the Lord is saying is as we go into the secret place, God is going to start giving us these glimpses of that 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 eternal impact that he wants to make through us. Like, And, and, and maybe he'll give us. I don't know, a vision. Like for some people, he'll give you a vision. He'll give you a dream. Yeah. Uh, he'll he'll have someone speak a prophetic word over you or something like that, or he'll put it, a desire in your heart. Yeah, yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, I think that, um, you know, there's just, <clears throat> I love what you're saying there about, you know, my my your purpose is in my hands. It's right here with me. I will show it to you if you abide with me, right? So, you know, the Bible says, I believe it's in Ephesians, it says that God had predestined us for war. Uh, he even has predestined works for us before the yeah. foundations of the earth <laughs> that we may walk in them. <laughs> so he's already got these works prepared for us, predestined for us uh, before he even created the foundations of the earth. Like in the beginning when God was wow. and always will be. And even before the beginning started, because <laughs> he always existed before time ever even became a beginning. He already had your plan. He already had your purpose. He already predestined it before the foundations. And he already prepared the solutions and the provision for the purpose. So he provided the sacrifice before the foundations of the world. <laughs> he prepared the works for you before the foundations of the world. And he already provided the power of the Holy Spirit before the foundations of the world to enable you wow. to even walk in these purposes. So when you have that revelation, then you understand that all you have to do is abide. There isn't yeah. a working your way into it. It says that we're by grace through faith. We have been saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. These works that have been prepared for us to walk in. It's not a way that we work our way into them. It's a way that we abide in him and live through him and in him and through him. We actually step into it because the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. 
<laughs> yeah, so as man. long as we're in the secret place, abiding in him, you know, it, it's, it's the simplicity of walking with God like Enoch did. Mm. <laughs> and you know what I love about that scripture? We talk about Enoch getting raptured, uh, you know, and how he was taken. But I yeah. love how it says, and Enoch walked with God and was not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and when you hear was not, it's like, man, like as long as we're walking with him, you know, we don't have to worry about dying to our flesh. We don't have to worry about crucifying ourselves. It's abiding in him, being with God, and you will be not <laughs> so that you can be everything that you're supposed to be in him. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing. And I honestly, this is one of the things that I feel like we hear a lot but there's always that question of how do I actually do that? And then like, why am I failing at that? You know, it's like, yeah, I know I'm supposed to pick up my cross daily and follow Jesus. I know I'm supposed to crucify my flesh. I know I'm supposed to die to myself. But at the same time, those those desi those fleshly desires seem so strong. How am I supposed to fight that in order to be the Christian God's calling me to be, you know, to be this yeah. person that he's called me to be? And you're absolutely right. That is absolutely the answer. It, you know, the, the word even says, if you walk by the the, the spirit, you're not going to satisfy the desires of the flesh. You know, like that is it. Like you, if you're walking by the spirit, these other things are going to fall into place. You know, that doesn't mean that we don't make a conscious decision. You know, that doesn't mean that we're just like not using our brains ever. But at the right. same time, those I believe those things can abide together. And I think that that's the problem. You know, a lot of people will say, don't be so spiritually or heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. And in, in my mind, I'm like, I'm like, be heavenly minded and earthly good. Be, you can be both at the same time. And that's what the spirit does. You know, he doesn't rob us of our intellect. But at the same time, it's like he allows us. He actually uh, guides us to use what the gifts God has given us in the way God actually designed us to use those gifts. So, yeah. Anyways, man, I, I just love that. I love that answer that it's like it's in the abiding. It's in the abiding that we're able to overcome. Yeah, man, you don't you don't have to force a, uh, a a branch doesn't force itself to bear fruit, right? <laughs> it just stays connected and then the fruit comes out. <laughs> but yeah, man. So one of the things the Lord uh, also spoke to me about, Nelson, was this idea of prophecy and how it ties into destiny. Mm. And this is this is what he specifically asked me to ask you to to talk about a little bit is is talk about prophecy and how it leads to purpose how it can lead to purpose and one of the things the lord actually said to me when he said that he said how i use it to correct protect and provide for the purpose i've put inside my people so this is something that god does i believe is that he uses prophecy some of the things he uses it for is correction you know like i think there there's room for that under the new covenant um, you know, because it's not correction is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not that it's not abuse. You know, I know some some of us we've experienced that uh, emotional abuse, you know, from a guardian or something like that. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. You know, right. it, it, his correction is always rooted and grounded in love, but then also protection like God can can use a, a word in due season. He can use it. Uh, to protect us from going down the wrong path. And so I want you to speak into that a little bit and maybe share some of your own story, because uh, I'm just going to say this, y'all. Uh, but but I I actually saw uh, somebody that I look up to in the prophetic ministry, like giving a prophetic word to you over something that I knew you were already you were already in the process of doing now, you know, which is yeah. uh, just revival. Right. So I want you to share that a little bit, but also give us some of the backstory behind that as well. Yeah, 100 percent. So. Uh, I, I, the what you're referring to is in 2016, April 9th, 2016, uh, there was a huge stadium event called the Zuza Now, uh, where Prophet Shambles came up on the stage and said, there's a Nelson here, birthday, October 28th, and you're from Philly. And immediately, if you go see that video, it's on my YouTube channel. I begin to scream, yeah, that's me, you know. <laughs> and then he starts prophesying, you're a revivalist to the nth degree. You've been pursuing revival as your primary passion. And God knows your birthday because just like I said, for millions of years, he knew you and predestined you to pretty much be in that position, which is what we just talked about. <laughs> right. right. So so he then he prophesies all these other things. And, and it was this very glorious moment. And that happened in a stadium of 70,000 people. Wow. Uh, millions of people watching worldwide, I can imagine. And yeah. uh, God just affirmed my calling in front of the whole world, right? And the backstory behind that is um, I was actually going through a season. Now, 
he didn't say anything new to me, right? So, like, for me to hear him say that, it wasn't like that's the first time I heard God tell me that. He came to just affirm in a public level what God had been whispering to me in private for years, right? Wow. So I got saved in 2012 where the Lord Jesus appeared to me, and I got radically saved. I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't grow up in religion. I was a messed up uh, 15-year-old kid, and Jesus appeared to me October 7, 2012, and I've never been the same since. Three months after that encounter, uh, it was January 1, 2013, and I had another visitation from the Lord. It was in a church service right after midnight hit, uh, the, the power of God smacked me on the floor, laying on the ground, and the voice of the Lord came to me like he came to Jeremiah and began to tell me my calling. And before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and began to just <laughs> tell me everything that he said to Jeremiah, said to me on the ground. <laughs> wow. And what's crazy is I had never read the book of Jeremiah. I was only three months saved. And I began to say to the Lord, no way, like, I'm too young. What are you talking about? That sounds ridiculous. And then um, the power of God came over me like electricity. I got up off the ground. I began to just lay hands on people in the church. I didn't even know what that was because <laughs> yeah, I, I was only three months saved. You know, I didn't I didn't grow up in church yet. You know how all the church and and Christian stuff, you know, but I just started touching people in the church and the power of God would start hitting them. They all started falling off, falling on the ground. Um, I ran across the church, grabbed a young girl by the hand, and demons screeched out of her. Ah! Got delivered. That girl uh, later came to me. She got delivered of depression and uh, suicide. It was a spirit of death on her life. People Praise got Jesus. up off the ground. People got off the ground, taking their neck braces off, their canes, <laughs> throwing them at the altar. <laughs> And that's awesome. That's how it, that was my introduction to the things of God, <laughs> right? I go home. I, I open my Bible. I'm like, I'm shaking under the electricity of God. I said, what is this, God? What is this? And I open my Bible and it falls on Jeremiah 1, 5, which I've never read. And mm -hmm. I began to read Jeremiah 1 and it begins to say word for word what the spirit of the Lord spoke to me when I was on that ground. And it, wow. it blew me away. And then he says to Jeremiah, do not say, oh, I am a youth, which is the exact objection I had on the ground. <laughs> so, <laughs> just amazing. But here's the thing, right? So that was when I got, uh, so the Lord told me my calling right there, right? Three months into being born again. Um, but see what most people expect is the moment you get your, get the word of the Lord, it's, it, you know, we're going in, everything's going to be fine and dandy, but actually I began a process, right? And that process was, uh, obviously the process of sanctification that every believer has to go through, but it was also the process of persecution and how mm -hmm. persecution can develop the character, um, that can sustain the calling in your life. Uh, that prophetic promise that he gave me in that moment uh, initiated a process, and I began to go through what I like to say. I had to go through hell to get to carry heaven, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just like Joseph, right? Joseph got his word. He had a dream of, of the purpose and the future that he had. And Joseph thought that that meant that he's going to rule over his brothers right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but actually, the, the revelation of his purpose uh, began the process. And that process was persecution, rejection, the hatred of his own brethren, right? Um, the, the, even the imprisonment, <laughs> being sold as a slave, right? Uh, then the false accusation he had to endure um, and not, you know, not have, you know, it's just the same journey Jesus went through, right? And, mm -hmm. and so he went through a process of dying to the ambition and the desire of that promise uh, to develop the, the, the posture that can sustain it. <laughs> so I went through a process where uh, the church began to turn on me. Um, I began to move wow. in the power of God and in the supernatural. I began to see a revival in my high school, winning souls in my high school. Um, and, you know, God gave me this huge vision of where I would be one day. Um, but, you know, what you really got to do is just be obedient in the little things he tells you to do now. And that's, that's yeah. what the process is. And, uh, man, the church turned on me. They began to falsely accuse me of things. Um, I got, uh, you know, for a long story short, I was uh, kicked out of three churches within a matter of my wow. first five years of being born again. Um, none of those reasons uh, would be because I was trying to be rebellious or arrogant or uh, talking bad about them. As a matter of fact, I never raised my tongue against them uh, in, in any evil. I, I prayed for them. I never tried to defend my reputation. I never tried to say, oh, they were wrong because of this or that. I just blessed them and went on like David, right? He didn't, he, he refused to touch not God's anointed, <laughs> right? Right, and, yeah. And uh, 
when that prophetic word came forth in 2016, I had gotten, uh, I had went through this stuff in 2014, uh, where I went through my name being slandered all around the city of Philadelphia. I couldn't walk into a church without somebody saying, oh, we know who you are. And wow. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was this 17 year old kid. I mean, think about the age I was, right? Like, yeah. Who, uh, how is it that a 17 year old kid caused so much trouble? Uh, just trying to share the gospel, seeing souls saved in my high school, casting out demons and healing the sick, you know? Right. Um, so just to give backstory to my pro my story to where I'm at now and then relate it to the viewer. Um, but then I went through that for two years where I couldn't find a home church because everywhere I went, my name had been slandered somehow. Uh, wow. And, and so then I never vindicated myself. I never tried to defend myself. I just stayed faithful with the Lord in the closet um, I still visited different places to try to find a place that I can, you know, I still remained in fellowship. I would be out in the streets every night winning souls for the Lord. Um, and then in 2016, January 13, 2016, I spent 13 hours in the presence of God because we had a blizzard in Philly. Me and my wow. friend, we locked ourselves in. We stayed for 13 hours in the glory. And then at a certain hour... I went through an encounter where the Lord began to download to me everything that was going to happen month by month in the year of 2016. Wow. In that note, the, I wrote in April, the Lord said to me, in April, you're going to begin to see the first fruits of the church recognizing the calling on your life. Now, I mm. thought he meant the local church because that, I started attending a local church at the time that I was finally getting plugged into. Um, I didn't know he meant the global church. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so then come April 2016, I'm in this uh, this event that I've, I, I spent everything I had to go um, because I felt God wanted me to be there. And then right there in front of 70,000 people, like I said, millions watching worldwide, God reaffirms my calling. Um, mm. And that actually vindicated my name in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So when I went back to Philly, all the people who slandered me, turned on me, had, were told to stay away from me, and I wanted to befriend me. <laughs> wow. But God vindicates you, right? Um, but yeah. given that, even when that happened, that still wasn't the answer. I wasn't, uh, I was still in the process because now I got another mm -hmm. wonderful prophetic word. But then I went again through another season in another place <laughs> of additional persecution. And again, I went through a process. Then I got married. And then, you know, the process of getting married and having a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, it's, and, and so my point in saying that now that we, I finally stepped into what I'm doing, my point in saying that is the prophetic promise is the initiation of a prophetic process. Mm. And it's your posture within the process that will determine the promotion. Wow. And, every, and the goal is of the process is that you would come to the point where you love not your life, even until the point of death, where mm. you're not married to the promise, you're married to the promise giver. Right. And your love and infatuation isn't with the purpose, it's with the person that gives the purpose. Yeah. And when you die to the love of this world, or the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life, finding my identity in the doing, finding my identity in a purpose, finding my identity in a calling. When you die to finding your identity in all those things, then the Spirit of God can trust you with the promotion wow. and can give you the promise. And that's the process that Moses had to go through, 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years... Um, uh, you know, in the wilderness again, right? He was 40 years in the backside of the desert. Then he goes to Egypt, gets the people out, and then he's 40 years in the wilderness. Never even saw the promise, but God can trust him. You know why? Because he wasn't in love with the promise. He was in love with the God of the promise. And that's the posture we must have for God to yeah. be able to trust us with the promotion and the purpose that is in our life. So many people want to say, what's my purpose? God will reveal his will to you. But understand that that will, that prophetic word, would initiate a prophetic promise. And that's why so many are discouraged. They get a word of God. They get a prophetic word. And then they realize everything's not going in the direction that I thought it would. <laughs> and it's because God's now taking you through a journey to create the character and the foundation that can actually sustain the call of God on your life. 
Yeah, Jesus said count the cost, you know, and and he used that illustration that if someone's building a tower and they didn't they didn't know how much it was going to cost when they started, they might get halfway done and then be like, "Oh, I can't finish," you know. But he's referring to our our walk with him, and here's what I've noticed is uh is is the reason that he says count the cost is it's not so much so that we can we can have enough uh, you know, stored up to be able to do what he's asking us to do. That's not the reason. The reason is so that we can see this is going to cost me everything ahead of time. And then we go into it with that knowledge, you know, and then when, you know, when we go through those seasons of persecution, those seasons of trials and we go, Oh wow, this is, and we start feeling like this is going to, this is costing me a lot more than I realized or anticipated. We can go back to what we decided in the beginning and we re and, and then we can stand on that decision. Like, I know, I'm not in this. I'm not in this for the promise. Like you said, I'm not in this yeah. for the promotion. I'm in this for the person who called me, you know, and then it's like, oh, it's going to cost me this too. It's, it's going to cost me this as well. The process, that's okay. It's going to cost me this too. That's okay. You know, because I've already made that decision to give everything up for him, you know, and, and the, the really good news is it's like, at the end of the day, you realize like, I'm not drawing from my own strength. You know, it's, it's him giving me the strength, but it's in order to receive that. It's like I have to stay in that place of abiding and that place of surrender and that place of not my will, but your will be done. If you want me to walk through these trials, I'm going to walk through them, you know, and you're going to give me the strength, I believe, to, to get through, you know, but it's like it's there's still a cost involved. There's still a surrender involved. And yeah, man, I you reminded me of uh this you remind me of this this one day when I was going through probably the hardest year of my life, I would say, uh, back in 2012. And I, I just remember this one day where I was like I was so angry and I was like literally punching the floor, you know, in my apartment and just just so angry at God and ang angry about life and everything. And but really crying out to God at the same time, you know. And I, I got this vision of a valley and I've been thinking about this for like weeks. i had been seeing this image of a valley, you know, and I just felt like, yeah, God, thank you for reminding me, you know, sarcastically. Thank you for reminding me that I'm in the valley, you know, like I know I'm there, like I know. And then I remember this one day where I was just calling out to the Lord and suddenly I had this image and, and this, it was a very simple image in my mind. You know, I'm just laying on the floor and I saw this picture of Jesus on the path in the valley that I was walking through, you know. And I remember out loud, I said to the Lord, I just said, Jesus, like, what are you doing here? You know, <laughs> like, why are you here? And I remember I could see him like holding his hand out to me. And he just said, if you're walking through the valley, I'm walking through it too. And in that, in that moment, that day, that was the day where I made the decision, like anything God asked me to walk through, I'm going to walk through as long as he's there with me, you know, and that's going to make it worthwhile. And it absolutely has. That was over 10 years ago now. You know, that was about 10 years ago now. And I can 100% say it's worth it. You know, I've had to walk through things that, you know, and you as well, Nelson, I'm sure you've had to walk through more than I have. But it's like, it's like, we're always going to have to walk through things we didn't expect. And it's it's always going to have, there's always going to be a cost involved. But when Jesus is walking with you, you know, yeah. like the three men in the fiery furnace, you know, like, yeah. they're yeah. like, well, <laughs> God's going to deliver us. But, you know, even if he doesn't, like, if. here we go, like, throw us in, you know. And yet what they found was they were walking through a fire, but Jesus is right there with them. You know, he was walking in the fire with them. And that deliverance doesn't always happen the same way. You know, God did not say he's always going to keep us safe physically. You know, like it's 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 not the way it's always going to be. We see that uh, just through the story of martyrs, you know, like people that have literally lost their life for Christ. But at the same time, you know, 100 percent that Jesus was walking in, in that moment with them. And they were probably closer to the Lord than they had ever been, you know, like like his yeah. presence was probably there closer than it had ever been before, you know, and, and I could say that 100 percent like the hardest days, the hardest days for the Lord have been the times where his presence has been the most just the most beautiful, you know, and I, I man, it's just I, I think this is a needed message message, Nelson, that there's a process that comes after the, the prophetic word. There's a process that comes after it. And if we're not ready for that, if we're not geared up for that, if we're not willing, you know, to go through that, 
then yeah, we are going to get really upset when the word doesn't go, when the, you know, when the, the situation doesn't go the way we thought it was going to go based on what we heard or based on what someone shared with us. But it's, it's almost always the case, you know, and the word, a lot of times what I found is the word acts like a sustaining. When we really, when we really get that confirmation, we go, God, did you really say this to me? God, did you really share this with me, this vision for my future, whatever it may be? When we get the confirmation from the Holy Spirit and we know, yes, God really did say this, then we can know, you know, he's trustworthy. His character is good. So if he shared that with me, I know he's going to do it at the right time. I don't have to make it happen. And I know that the process, I can know for 100% that the process I'm in right now is going to be worthwhile and it's going to be a good thing in the long run. And man, I don't know, dude, that's just such, that's such a good, uh, a good encouraging message. Amen. 100%. Yeah. I mean, the Bible also says an inheritance obtained too soon is not good for you. You know, the, the prophetic reveals the will, the, 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 the future, right? The purpose, the destiny and the inheritance that God has laid up for you, the, the, the works that you've been predestined for, the prophetic reveals that, but his word, and this is, is the thing, this is why we, we get the daily word, right? The daily bread where we're constantly being obedient to that, his word is a lamp unto your feet and then a light unto your path. But notice it's a lamp. A lamp can only light up what's ahead of you. And, you know, we want to see the whole journey. I mean, think about Abraham. You know, we have to yeah. remember it's very ingrained in our uh, modern culture to, to want everything quick. Quick gratification, quick satisfaction, quick things. Um, not realizing that, man, this is a journey. Like, look at the fathers of our faith. <laughs> Jesus didn't yeah. his ministry till the age of 30. You know, like, and, and what was he doing for 30 years? You know, we don't hear of the father. We don't hear of any conversation that, the, that other than the birth from the birth on, we hardly hear of, of, of the, of the conversations that Jesus had with God. We don't hear of any working of miracles. We don't hear of anything that we would consider supernatural or phenomenal or wow. So extravagant. He was a simple son. Of a, and, and then he was raised by a simple woman and a simple carpenter. He was just a carpenter's uh, apprentice, and that was it until he was 30. And, and you know what's the most amazing thing to me? That when it was time, he was baptized, the heavens split open, and the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He did not do anything ministerially, anything that was extravagant, Anything that we would consider great, he was simply a carpenter until the time of his shine. And the father already said, I'm proud of you. And oftentimes we feel like we, we're, we're trying to work for the I'm proud of you from God. If you only knew that he already was. Yeah. If you knew that he already was, you wouldn't strive to get the I'm proud of you of God. And, you know, that comes from an orphan mindset this is why the bible says that we have been adopted as sons we've been brought in as sons this is the goodness of the gospel and the goal is god does not want your destiny your purpose or your assignments to be wrapped with your identity because if it's wrapped with your identity the moment he gives you the purpose the moment he gives you the promise the moment it doesn't go the way you want to you will compromise to keep it because you are in it for the thing rather than the one who gave it. But see, the goal is that the pro you will have the promise, not the promise having you. If the promise has you, the moment that people will betray you, because it's, I'm gonna tell you what's included with the promise, you ready? Hatred, ridicule, persecution, misunderstandings. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you'll have the favor of man, but you'll also have the wrath of man and the wrath of the devil. So you need to weigh the cost and realize that blessed be the Lord, my God, who giveth and who taketh away. And, and, and that's what the process is there for. The process is there to ensure that you are crucified to the world and the world is crucified to you. And, you know, you think about guys like Stephen. He had, I'm sure he could have been one of the most extravagant preachers of all of history. But the man's purpose was to be stoned to death instantly. The moment he stepped up to preach. <laughs> so, but it and you know what's the most amazing thing to me? He got a standing ovation from the Father, from Jesus. He, it says, I see the Lord standing at the right hand. He was seating. 
and he stood up to give him a standing ovation, you know? And, and so we had to realize that the, per, the, the process is the greatest place to be. Do not be hasty for the promise. The promise mm -hmm. will come. And there's nothing you need to do in the sense of, uh, you know, working your way to it, except the, the only works that we do is being faithful in the little. And there's some of you, I just heard this, there's some of you saying, well, what is God's will for my life? What is my purpose? Here's the good news. If you don't have a prophetic word to, to get the revealed personal assignment or destiny in your life, the best thing you can do is go into the scriptures and know the already revealed will. Mm -hmm. And as you're faithful with the already revealed will of God, then you will get the specific revealed will for your, per for your life. And so for me, I just remain faithful. The Bible said, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. It's already revealed that that's what he wants me to do. I don't need to, I don't need to wonder, does he want me to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead? It's already there. <laughs> does he want me to go and win souls and make disciples of all nations? It's already there. It's already there what he all want, already wants us to do. And as you become faithful in what he already wants you to do that has already been revealed in the scriptures, then and the, in the journey, you begin to develop a prophetic history with God where God begins to reveal this specific will and the specific directions to get you to a specific destination that he has purposed for you and himself. So we can already be faithful with the specific, the already revealed will. And as we go in the journey, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. As you seek first the kingdom and all of his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. And then you'll begin to get specific details as to what does it look like for you? Is it in the marketplace? Is it in the arts and entertainment industry? Is it in government that God has you, that wants, God wants to place you, just like it was with Joseph or with Daniel? You know, is it in different areas, right? Is it in the church? Is it in the, in the church world? Is it on a stage with the church world? Or is it on a stage in the business world? Because they need the gospel too. They need, a, they need somebody in the business industry to shine a light. So God will reveal the specific details as you're faithful with what's already revealed. Because he who can be trusted mm. with little can then be trusted with the much. And if you can't be trusted with what he's already revealed, then how can he, you be trusted with the additional revealed will of mm. God that is specific to your life? Wow, Nelson, that's amazing, man. Yeah, you're reminding me of uh, something the Lord used to have to do for me all the time to carry me through the seasons where I was just trying to be obedient, just trying to respond to the Holy Spirit, but also just, you know, experiencing a lot of that pushback, a lot of the trials, a lot of the just, you know, the the struggle. And what he would do is I would get to the end of my day and I would just have this feeling of, man, I didn't, I didn't do enough today. I didn't accomplish enough. If that's the goal, I'm not even, you know, what did I do to get close to that goal? Yeah. Right. Like I haven't done anything like I, like I was working hard all day, but you know, but then sometimes it's like, this is when I was in a place where I wanted to be in full-time ministry. And that's not, you know, that's not God's calling for every believer is to, is to have their career be, full-time ministry, but at the same time it is, you know, cause you're, you're going to be a minister everywhere you go, but you know what I mean? It's like, we're not all meant to work for a church, but at the same time, it's like, I knew I was called to do this kind of ministry full time. And, you know, and I didn't have the resources or finances to do that, to be able to step out and do that for a long time. You know, so I was working for other ministries and doing other things and I would get to the end of the day and I'd be like, man, I didn't get to work on ministry stuff at all. You know, like, gosh, yeah, like yeah. I would felt like what a waste. And the Holy spirit would have to say to me, good job today. You know, and some days it would be, I took a Sabbath rest and I didn't do anything. And I just spent time with my kids and my wife and the Holy spirit would say, good job today. Good job, son. <laughs> you know? And I just be like, what was I working for today? You know, if not that, like, <laughs> you know, and it, it's like, he was, he was grooming me to not wake up in the morning and go after something other than him, you know, cause I, and then what happened was I started waking up in the morning and start, instead of thinking, what can I do to get closer to my goal today? It was just like, what can I do today? So I get to the end of my day and I hear that again, <laughs> oh, you know, like, and, and what can I do so that I'm hearing that throughout the day, you know, so that I'm, I know that I'm, I'm right where he wants me to be, you know, like I know that I'm with him and I'm walking with him. 
you know, there's one thing, there's this, there's a scripture uh, in, uh, I believe it's second Samuel chapter eight, where it says, and God helped David with everything that he did, you know, and it's in the middle of David going and doing all sorts of crazy things that we might actually judge David for, you know, he's, he's literally like subjugating people and doing different things and like, you know, fighting wars and stuff. And then it's like, and God helped David with everything that he did, you know, and that verse, like it just jumps out at me so powerfully when I read it. Cause it's like, wow, could, you know, like, wow. what would I need to, where would I need to be for God, for God to be able to say that about me, you know, and God helped Troy with everything he did. Like, it's like, wouldn't that be like what you want? <laughs> wouldn't that be where you want to be? You know? And the answer is what you were talking about earlier. It's like, the answer is just, it's, it's not so much, oh, I figured out this specific thing that God told me to do, or I, I put this specific shirt on today because the Holy Spirit told me to, or, you know, or, or right, it's not right, that. Right. It's like, it's like, or I went to Walmart instead of Albertsons or HEB instead of Walmart or whatever. Yeah. No, it's like, it's what, where's your heart today? Who is your heart after? What are you, who are you looking at? You know, and who it's like, if you don't have any of the specifics, are you being obedient with what God has already generally revealed to you in the word? You know, and it's like at the end of at the end of that, you know, God is absolutely saying, I'm with you. You know, I'm right there. You know, like you're doing what you know to do right now. And and you reminded me, Nelson, you know, Jesus, you, you were talking about how J Jesus, we don't see anything supernatural happening, you know, before, you know, he turns 30. Right. And he, and he gets yeah. baptized. Yeah. At the same time, once he got there, he was ready for the ministry. You know, it's like he oh it's like he already had all the scriptures in mind. You know why? Because he had obviously like that's he was already passionate about that. He was already doing the things God had called him to do, you know, and sometimes I'm sure that what, what God was calling him to do was simply, man, go home and help your dad, you know, <laughs> like with the, what the work that he's working on. You know, it's like yeah. sometimes that obedience was just the simple practical thing part of life that god was calling him to but he got to that point already having learned obedience you know already yeah. and it's like man like that like that today what is god asking me to do today what is that thing that's where that's where the the glory happens you know it's like that's where the and god was with them helping them with everything yes. they did that's where that happens you know, it's it's like in that moment of, I just want to be with him today, and I just want to be doing what he's doing. You know, and and when that happens, we're good. <laughs> you know, and yeah. that that is oh my gosh, man, it's just, uh, it's such a good place to be. This is what I know. Uh, yeah, before we move on, man, I I'm putting you on the spot right now, but I really feel like the Holy Spirit is saying you have a story uh, to share of a time where you heard a prophetic word and it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. Um, and this, maybe this is the same thing you were already sharing earlier, another part of that story, but it's something that you got from the Lord and then you went through a season and I'm really putting you on the spot here. So <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm doing yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but you know, that you went through a season of just, you know, if you said this, God, why that, why is this happening? Why, why is this the way it is? You know, and and maybe it's just what you're sharing earlier, you know, with uh, with the persecution or something. And if you could just speak into that, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I think that the what I was sharing earlier is, is it plays a huge role in that. Right. Uh, but to add to that, you know, I want to I want to express two things. Number one, during that season, I had started a high school program in 2014. Um, when, and I was believing for revival in this high school and I had gotten a vision of, uh, all of the high schools in Philadelphia, uh, having revival, right. And we had it, we had started a high school program. We were seeing revival in the high school. And again, I was only 17 years old, 16 years old leading this thing. Um, and I was really believing we were going to take the whole high school. We were going to also take the city and uh, by storm into different high schools. I even sat down. And to the degree that I sat down with the the person who's in charge of all the high school programs in the city of Philadelphia, I was seeing what I was feeling God was saying is going to be. I was seeing the doors open in front of me. I sat down yeah. with this person. I, I had a, a, a pay, I had put together a three page um, forum of, of what the program looks like and the effectiveness of the program. The guy sat with me and said, 
this is amazing. We want to put this in all 800 high schools in the city of Philadelphia. And I was just in shock. Wow. <laughs> I'm only a 17 year old kid hearing that, you know, that's a big, that's a big thing, you know, and everything seemed like it was going in that direction. And then that's when the persecutions began at, at the church. And then they began to want to take control of it. And they began to want to change the name of it under the, the church's name. And they had never helped me for two years. And then suddenly they want to help wow. me now. And, um, it's like a yeah. Potiphar. It's like a, a Joseph and it's Potiphar, right? Is the guy's name. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like that moment of like, he's finally getting some traction, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly it's like, wait a minute, God, like <laughs> I was here where you dragged me. And then I was being faithful in this place that I didn't want to be, you know, and now you're dragging the rug from out from under my feet again, you know, like what what is going on you know like that's that would have been me in that moment you know it would have been yeah. like what is happening why are you allowing well, this to happen that's exactly what it was and it was like it was finally moving to the to what i had envisioned it would be and then just like potiphar he, he joseph became second in command at potiphar's house it yeah. was an image of what he had prophetically was supposed to be in <laughs> Right. It, it, it was it was actually just a type and shadow. It wasn't the, the full thing. And that's what I was in. I was like, oh, man, we're about to see this. It's finally here. And then right when I got there, it was like the rug was taken right under me. And then wow. false accusation began. And then it just tore the whole thing down and it tore it completely apart. And, and I went through, you know, I went through and just to add to this story, I had about 70 plus young kids that I had taken from the school brought them to that church and almost all of them fell away Wow! because this happened in the church. And I've only had the, uh, the, the grace to restore about four out of them. Wow. So imagine winning all these people to the Lord, seeing them on yeah. fire because we had a revival culture really establishing and then seeing this happen and all of them got shattered by the church. Some of them went seven times worse back into the world. Some of them are wow. in jail. Some of them still live in their mother's basement because they could never overcome the grief and the pain of what happened from the church. And, and I mean, just the destruction. And I wept for two years, not vindicating myself, feeling like I was in the, in, in the prison because <laughs> nobody, I couldn't even go to a church without somebody, you know, the pastor even looking at me some type of way, like as if I'm a criminal. And... I was just like, Lord, I brought your sheep to a bunch of wolves and they, they destroyed these young kids, man. And, and, and it was, it was probably the toughest two years of my life. But, and again, and then when I felt like I had failed God because I, I had to give up the ministry in the high school, I, I handed it down to another young man and I, and I was so broken in that season. I couldn't even help him because I, I felt <laughs> so shattered within myself that I didn't have the ability to help him continue the program after I graduated. So the, the program eventually just died out. The name of that program was Logos. Lean on God, our savior. That's what we called it. Um, that's the name I had for it. And so here it was now in 2016, I felt like God swept it right under me. You know, it was gone. I was in the pit. It felt like the, you know, the prison. And yeah. then Sean Bowles, when he prophesied, he said, and there's something about a Logos <laughs> wow! but God says he's taking you from the logos to the rhema and and that to me was like the Lord saying son you're exactly where I wanted you to be you didn't fail yeah me. and it's and it's okay that the logos didn't turn out like you wanted it and man it, it healed my heart so much because I felt like I failed him that's amazing and that prophetic word came to tell me son you didn't fail me it's just not what you thought it was and I had carried the logo, you know, the thing for a while. And then, and just to add to this, then I started seeing the logos becoming a business and it was evolving and it would be multiple things. And then I started a business. Once I got out of the, the workforce, uh, I was a salesperson and then for things like that, I was working at T-Mobile, seeing miracles at the T-Mobile store every day, just selling cell phones and getting people healed, <laughs> you know, and getting people saved at the T-Mobile store. Again, it, it never changed. It never stopped. Right. And then I went to work at Comcast and I started seeing souls get saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit over the phone. I would sell them a, 
uh, 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 internet plan, and then they, they would get baptized in the Holy Spirit over the phone and start speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my supervisor was an atheist. And he would hear my phone calls because they could have access to the phone calls. <laughs> and he would hear the people on the phone saying, I'm healed. Oh, my gosh. I can touch my feet. I haven't been able to do that. And it's like, you know, and and, and then, you know, I, I left that job and went into the door-to-door -door sales industry, saw miracles in the door-to-door -door sales industry. Then I started my own business. And, again, I thought that was going to be the thing. And I found myself in, this, in, uh, in the career and occupation path of sales and business. And I was like, man, I'm really passionate about this. It, it reminds me of evangelism, right? And I'm winning, I'm selling alarm systems. I was selling solar. And I'm like, man, you know, I said, you know, I sell home security, but I can provide eternal, you know, I can get you eternal security for free. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. You know, that's how I would pitch it. And man, I would see families get saved, delivered right after I sold them an alarm system. And it was amazing. And then I started building a team because I was building this business. I started training other salespeople and things like that. And I thought that was going to take off. Hmm. And and ended up not. And I ended up going through the hardest season of my life. And wow. my marriage started falling apart. And, mm. you know, when I got married, I thought things were going to be great. I went through the hardest three years of my life. The first time, I, like right, right from our marriage, it was like downhill from there. And the business, I, I was going wow. somewhere and then it just went downhill from there. And what it was is it was God removing me, finding my identity in anything except him. Because then I got I got in the trap of I want to be the best husband I can be. I want to be the best father that I can be because I never got to see a marriage in my life. My, my parents weren't married and they were they broke up when I was like seven years old. I was born mm. out of an adulterous affair. I was born out of, out of iniquity like David. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and and so I, I was trying to be the best dad I could be and the best father that I uh, or the best husband that I could be. And I felt like I was failing in every aspect of trying to be a good husband because I felt like I was never enough. And. Then I got a baby girl and I was trying to be the best father and I still felt like I was never good enough. And then I was trying to be the best business person and I kept failing there. And, 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 mm -hmm. and or at least in my perspective, I was failing in all these areas. And then we're, then things were finally starting to take off with the business. And then right when things were finally taking off and we were growing and, and I, had a, I had employees and we were getting somewhere, the word of the Lord came, in, came to me in 2019 and said, leave everything you own leave everything you have and go to Dallas. <laughs> wow. So here I am. I'm finally, things are taking off. Things are going good. I got a house. I got my, you know, everything was going good. And then the Lord said, leave it all. And we, we, we uh, left our home. We left all the furniture. We, we left, the, we, we just stopped the business. We shut the business down immediately. And my wife was finally in her career job as well th that she went to college for. She abandoned that too. And we wow. got in a car, loaded it with as much as we could, and moved into a hotel for two months, for three months. This wow. uh, January 2020. Three months later, what happened? The shutdown happened. Had I stayed in Philadelphia, I would have lost it anyways. <laughs> but God was faithful to tell me to lay it all down. And when we did that, man, I, I learned a valuable lesson, and including my marriage was still not where I wanted it. And I learned that it was because I was making all these other things my anchor. The success of these things determined my value to myself. And what God was trying to do was show me, son, your value is not in any of those things. And so everything that was finally going somewhere, he would take away from me. Mm -hmm. Every time I was finally getting somewhere, it would take away from me. I, fi I finally got married. I thought, man, this is going to be great. And then because I was trying to find my identity and being the best husband I can be or trying to be the best thing I can be for my wife, even in that area, God, I, I, I found myself failing because it, I was trying to make her the anchor of my life and wow. her opinion of me, the anchor of my life. And how many husbands and men allow their wives or feel like they're, what their wife says and their, and their wife's opinion of them is the anchor. And if they feel like they're failing at home, they feel like they're failing in their marriage. They feel like they, they failed God. They failed their life. And I felt like I'll never be able to serve the Lord because I can't even manage my own home. I can't even be a good husband. And I made her the anchor. I made mm. that my anchor. And so then God had to refocus and re-anchor me when we finally left everything and we had to depend on him in a hotel with no job, paying more than our mortgage to stay yeah. in a hotel with no income. Explain that yeah. to me. <laughs> 
and learning how to depend on him and lose my identity in everything except him. And when I finally got wow. re-anchored into that, um, I actually went through a deliverance. Um, I went, I, I found my, I realized that there were some things generationally in, 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 in my, in my family that were trying to divide my marriage. And, um, I went through this, this, this moment where right before I stepped into the glory revival, even this is months before I started the glory revival. I, uh, I, the word of the Lord. Well, I went through this situation with my wife, this argument where I finally said, I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm giving up on this marriage. It's been three years and I can't seem to get anywhere. I finally agreed with that thought. And man, all the, the gates of hell broke loose in my mind. And I was wrestling these thoughts for hours. I feel like this is going to help somebody while I'm sharing this. Um, and then after I, I went through this, this battle with, this, with these demons, I was up till four in the morning because I knew if I went to sleep with this, I would wake up a different man and I would lose mm. everything. And I was wrestling and it was thoughts of leaving my marriage, going somewhere else, going to move somewhere else and, and starting fresh and, and just get quitting everything. Uh, you know, and it was the same thing that happened with my dad. He left his mm. marriage, he left his kids and he met my mom. <laughs> so here I found myself in this generational thought pattern where I was about yeah. to commit the same actions and the temptation to be in the same s situation came. And I came and, and I got in the shower because I was falling asleep and I knew the voice of the Lord came to me. He said, Nelson, if you fall asleep with this in your heart, you will wake up and, and not be the same man. So I jumped in the shower. I started washing myself, hoping that the thoughts would get clean in the shower and they didn't. <laughs> so I got in the car and I drove off and I felt the Lord say to pull into a parking lot. I pulled into this parking lot and I began to war. And I said, devil, you're not going to have my marriage. You're not going to have my life. You're not going to have my daughter. You're not going to have my family. And I realized that the battle was bigger than just me. It was for my daughter. Because if mm. I committed the same cycle that my dad did, then my daughter will end up dealing with the same issue in her life when she grows older. And it was a generational curse. And I began to pray and I began to break these patterns. And, and I said, I will not lose my marriage. I will not. And I began to fight, fight, fight. And I said, every devil that's been in my bloodline, every devil that's been in my life, every devil that's trying to cause me to sabotage these things in my life, I command you to come out of my life now. And as I began to pray that, I began to feel something come up out of my belly and I threw up. I had to open the car door and I threw up like three or four times. When that happened, I looked up and it felt like the whole world was brand new. And wow. then I came to this conclusion. And I said, God, even if I never do anything extravagant in ministry for you, even if my wife never loves me back the way that I want her to love me, even if she never meets my needs, even if, uh, I, you know, all I do is, is, you know, even if I don't do anything else, even if you don't do another miracle for me, and it was mainly the issue of my wife. And I said, even if she never loves me back, I will love her no matter what. I will love her unconditionally. And I, will, and I will lay my life down for her no matter what, just like I will lay my life down for you no matter what, even if nothing ever goes the way that I want it to go. When I finally, realistically got to that even if moment in my heart, that's when everything changed for me. And then my wife got delivered a few months later. I cast demons out of my own wife. Mind you, wow. a believer, full of the Holy Spirit, loves God. And I began to cast demons out of my wife that the demon came out speaking out of her mouth saying, I've been in her for eight years. I think what's really powerful about what you're sharing and what's hitting me the hardest is the idea of you getting to that moment where you had to essentially surrender something you didn't think you're going to have to surrender, you know, because I think we all have this idea of. I'm either entitled to my life going this way or my marriage going this way or my business or my ministry going this way. I'm entitled to this happening or, or God is going, he, he, you know, for some reason he owes this to me, you know, and God has to get us to a point where we completely let that go and completely say, Lord, even if this never looks the way I want it to look, you know, like I want your will, you know, like I want your will here. And if I get that, I'm going to be okay. You know, like, like, but we have to make that decision in our heart. Our heart has to change. You know, we, our, we, our, our desire has to change. 
you know, that's the desire of the Holy Spirit. It's not a desire we could naturally have, you know, it's like it has to be him coming in and transforming us and changing us. And I've had so many of those moments, too, man, where it's like, oh, I did not think I was going to have to give this up, you know, yeah. but it's yeah. the only way forward. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like if the, if, if the Holy Spirit has to come into this area in my heart and he has to take residence here and he has to be Lord over this or else we're not going to be able to move forward you know, in, into the destiny and the plan that God has. And that is, I honestly, man, I just feel the Holy spirit on that, on what you're saying there. And I believe that there's some people, and while you were speaking, I heard this from the Holy spirit. There's some people listening who you are losing something that you thought God had for you. Right. You're, and, and, and you're, you're missing out on it. Whatever's happening, it's getting taken away from you and you're fighting to stay in, in the position you had in Potiphar's house. You're fighting to to keep what you had in Potiphar's wow. house. And God is saying, that's not what I have for you, that you're not meant to be there. Ultimately, that's that was a temporary thing. Now it's time to move forward. Even if you're in prison, it's time to move forward. You know, even if you're in the pit, it's time to it's time to move forward. And moving forward doesn't always mean moving up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it means moving down, you know, and for a season. But I hear that from the Holy Spirit is some people are fighting to stay to keep their position in Potiphar's house. And if you can see it that way and allow the Holy Spirit to, to give you the bigger perspective, I believe you're going to find joy in the season that you're in. No matter what is happening right now, no matter what is what trial you're walking through, no matter how difficult it is, God can not just give you joy, but he can give you strength. And that the joy of the Lord actually wow. is our strength. It's the strength that we need to move forward. Listen to me. This may sound crazy coming out of my mouth, but the, the season that you're walking through, even though it may be the hardest season you've ever walked through, can be the best season of your life. That's so the, up till now. The God can make this season without changing a thing become the greatest season of your life. And the way he does that is through the just the presence of the Holy Spirit coming in to the situation and, and the glory of God coming into the situation. And when that happens, man, it, it, the cost doesn't matter anymore. You can give up anything and everything because you have everything you need already. And I really felt this from the Lord uh, before we started this. The Lord asked me to encourage those listening to get a word from the Lord before moving forward. Even if you know that you are right now where what, what you're going after is what God has put in your heart. The I, I feel the Holy Spirit saying, get a word from God before you keep moving forward, especially if you're in a rough patch. If you're in a place, especially where you, you're asking that question, why are things not going the way God said that they were going to go? Get a fresh word, the same way Nelson did, where he got that uh, word when he he was obedient and he went to that conference like God told him to. You know, even though it cost a, a lot, there was a big cost involved, you know, but he did it. And then God spoke a word in that moment. And God is wanting to do this for you today on the stream. And Nelson, I did not expect this video to go so long. But as you were speaking, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about why it's going so long. And it is so that the specific people who were not going to receive this would drop off <laughs> so that at this moment, whoever is less left listening at this moment, listen to me, the Holy spirit has you here for a reason. And he's about to do something great in your life. And I honestly believe that uh, the Lord spoke this to me. He said a word in due season gives direction, timing and hope during the hardest parts of the process. And I love how Nelson you're talking about process and he uses the exact same word. And I wrote this a long time ago. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you're talking about the process and he's talking about how the, the hope during the hardest parts of the process comes when we get a word in due season. And listen, this is not the only thing that gives us hope. Okay. The, the prophecy is not the only part of the Christian walk. This is just a little part of it. Okay. We still need to be in the word. We still need to be in prayer. We still need to be worshiping Jesus. If we're, if we can't worship Jesus where we are, the chances are there is something demonic happening, okay? Because the last thing Satan wants is he wants us to worship our Savior. It's the last thing he wants because he knows there's freedom in the presence of God. There's freedom found in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So if you have a bitterness or an anger or something in your heart that's keeping you from going into worship, maybe you don't even know what it is, that's keeping you from going into that, that place where you're, you're all you're doing is saying, thank you, Jesus. If you can't get there normally, or if you have a hard time worshiping Jesus, even in a service with other people, there is a demonic stronghold 
that is keeping you from getting to that point. And that needs to be broken off today. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to break that off. But I also believe he wants to, to give you that word in due season. He wants to give you that, hey, I'm seeing everything you're going through right now, word. That, hey, I still have a plan for you, word. That, hey, this is the answer to your problem, word. And I also heard the Lord say that the, the how-to, the how-to often comes through a word from my spirit is what I heard him say. That that I this is what you asked me to do. I don't know how to do it. The Lord wants to tell you how to do it. Um, and so this is what I want to do, Nelson, is I just want to go into a time of worship. Listen to me. If something inside of you is telling you to turn this video off now, don't listen to that. Don't do that. We're going to go into a time of worship. We're going to worship Jesus. And I believe demons are going to fall off of people. I believe deliverance is going to happen, but I also believe God is going to begin to speak through the Holy Spirit right now. And he's going to be able to give you that prophetic message. It's probably not going to come through the video through me or Nelson. It's going to come from the Holy Spirit. He wants to speak to you in a way that we could never speak to you. You know, I mean, we can get prophetic words, but we are we are just people. OK, we're just people. We're just human beings. But the Holy Spirit can speak directly to you in your situation. And he wants to do that right now. So this is my encouragement to you is as we just begin to wait upon the Lord, worship. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that if you will seek the Lord with your whole heart, you will just lay everything out on the table before him. And you'll say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me right now? I believe that the Lord is going to speak to you. So I just want to say thank you, Jesus. I just praise you right now. And I say thank you, Jesus, for taking the nails in your hands and your feet. Thank you for taking the thorns in your head. Thank you for taking the whips, the lashes, Lord, the the beatings and the mockery and, and the people spitting on you and, and just saying all sorts of evil and hateful things against you that were not, that you did not deserve, Lord. And I just want to say thank Thank you for going through that and for continuing to go through it and for continuing to go through it and for not stopping and not giving up and not backing down until it was finished. Thank you, Jesus, that you took all of it. You took all of it. Everything that I deserved, everything we deserved, you took upon yourself. And so we just say thank you collectively right now. Every person listening, we're saying thank you, Jesus for what you did on the cross. And I thank you that because of that, we get to be free. The word says, he who the, who the son sets free is free indeed. So I just speak freedom over my brothers and sisters right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the lamb and by the, the spirit of God coming in. There's freedom happening right now. Uh, deliverance from demonic strongholds, from generational curses, from the lies uh, that the enemy has spoken over you, but also the lies that you've spoken over yourself when you've agreed with what the enemy has said, when when you've agreed with what the the devil's agenda was for your life, or what what Satan's uh, lot, what his plan was. Stop agreeing with the devil and start agreeing with Jesus. I'm hearing that from the Holy Spirit. Just agree with your Savior. Just say, yes, Jesus, everything that you want, everything that you have for me, that's what I want. That's what I need. Every plan that you have for me, I know is good. Even when it's hard, even when it feels difficult, I know it's the best plan for me. And listen to me, my friend, you might have a hard time saying that and believing it right now. But if you will say it out loud and then you will say, God, help my unbelief, just like the man in, in the Gospels who said, Jesus, I do believe, help my unbelief. The Holy Spirit will come in and he will begin to reveal those specific reasons why you're having a hard time believing it. He'll say, hey, do you remember this moment? You might have a, 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 a memory pop up from your childhood or from your past or something someone said to you specifically or did to you. And he'll say, this is the thing that's keeping you from, from crossing that line. This is it. This is the thing that's making you have a hard uh, time believing me in this area. And listen to me. Jesus can heal that in an instant. And I speak healing over you right now and over those memories that are popping up. But listen to me. Not only can he heal it, but he can redeem it and he can use it for his kingdom as hard and as painful as it was. And the devil is going to do everything he can right now to keep you from receiving that healing. But I just speak life over you right now where the devil spoke death. I speak freedom over you right now where the devil spoke bondage. And I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming in and for setting people free right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of Jesus. Whew. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes, and even Thank now you, as you're watching this, you just Rese tell the Lord, I surrender my will. Rese I surrender Rese myself, God, Rese every Rese area of my life. It doesn't look Rese like Rese you, <laughs> every part of my life. The Bible says, knowing now, such a, such a great, <laughs> you know, call Rese and purpose that we Rese have. It says, let us lay aside every sin oh, yes. that so easily besets us. And Father, yes, right now, in the mighty name Oof. of Jesus, every sin, every spirit Oof. that is putting a weight on them, you spirit of heaviness. Oof. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty Oof. name of Jesus, you spirit of delay, Oof. you spirit of self-sabotage, you spirit of destruction, Oof. we bind you now in Jesus. the mighty name of Jesus, and we command you to come up and come yes. out in Jesus of everyone name. watching now yes. in the oh, name Jesus. of Jesus we oh. cancel the delay we Oof. cancel the destruction we cancel Oof. the patterns of sabotage in their life we cancel Oof. every demon that comes Oof. to bring setbacks in the name yes. of Jesus and I release even now acceleration in their lives Father there's an oh, angel in the book of Revelations that says that he was brought so that there would be no more delay. I declare over them now that Thank the angel you. of acceleration would come into their lives. That there would be no more delay. Lord, we thank you that they don't have to wander in the desert any longer. But Father, as they're circumcising their hearts now, and as they're circumcising themselves, consecrating themselves, making themselves ready, that God, that they would be brought forth in Jesus' name, into that purpose of their destiny in Jesus' name. So I release these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I agree in Jesus' name. I heard this as you're as you're talking, Nelson. Uh, this is. Uh, psalm 139 16 and it says your eyes have seen my formless substance and in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them this is what i heard the holy spirit saying is he's going to start revealing to you what has been written about you he's going to start revealing those things that god has written about you the it's not just plans it's not just purposes. It's not just things to do. It's this is how God has written for you to be. You know, say, Satan planned one thing for you. He planned despair. He planned discouragement. He, he planned, uh, you know, sin habits for you. God has planned a, a better hope and a better future for you. God has planned better things. He's planned a life of peace so that when people look at you, they'll see a person who's at complete peace, a person who's filled with the joy of the Lord, a person who the glory of God is literally just radiating off of. That's what's written about you. That's what God has written about you. These are the things God desires for you. And then out of that place of just being in Christ and resting in him, God has a beautiful purpose for you, a beautiful, like, like Nelson said earlier, works that God uh, predestined uh, for you to do ahead of time, good works. And it comes out of that place of just resting in him. And man, y'all, <laughs> uh, when you start hearing God speak those things, when you start hearing the Holy Spirit speak those things about you, you know, sometimes the Lord has just had to say that to me where I'm just like, man, you know, like I'm just so discouraged. And the Lord will say, no, you're not. <laughs> that's not that's not who I've called you to be. That's not who I am in you. You're not a discouraged person. You're a person who gets to be full of peace, you know, and then in an instant that discouragement leaves and my whole demeanor changes. And I go, you know what? And I agree with what God has said about me. I agree with his plan, his purpose. You know, the, the word says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Why, why would the word have to say that to us if we don't get confused sometimes about the spirit that God has given us? You know, the word, the, that's why the word says that is so that we can look at, wait a minute, I'm operating in this spirit over here, but that's not the spirit God has given me. God has given me a spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. That means of self-control. That means of peace. Like I can be in a place, the same place that Jesus was, you know, where he, when he walked the earth, think about the disciples for a second, where they were, 
you know, they were always just just going off the rocker about everything that happened, right? Like it's like yeah. wind and storms and rains and on and here's a demon possessed person we can't cast the demon out. Like what do we do? You know, where are we going to get the the food for the, to feed these people? You know, where are we going to get the money to pay this tax? All these different things. Come on. Come on. You never see Jesus doing that because he was operating in the spirit of his father. He's operating in the Holy Spirit and that's the same spirit that God has given us and God wants us to be in that place that's what he's written about you he want that you can operate in that same spirit that jesus operated in so when things start to happen around you instead of going well how or, or what or where or why instead it's just yeah. i know who has already planned for me to be in this situation and i know how he's going to get this done i know what he's going to do I, I don't know the specifics but I know how he operates and I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be concerned. I don't have to get discouraged. I don't have to be worried here. And the same thing that Nelson's been talking about this whole time with that being in that process of, you know, betrayal and, and trials and difficulties and discouragement, all these different things that come against us, some things that are the devil's plan, some things that God has allowed us to walk through. But we're, when we are in that place, listen to me, you can literally slide through those yeah. situations when you know what spirit you're operating under through the power of the holy spirit you can slide through you know there's this verse in the book of job where job talks about how his feet used to be bathed in butter okay yeah. so weird <laughs> my feet were bathed in butter he's talking about a better time listen you you that's how you can live this life with your feet bathed in butter to where people are struggling through and you just come sliding in and flying past and they're just like what is going on with you? And it's the Holy Spirit inside of you. It's just the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's the joy of the Lord. And man, listen, I and I feel this from the Lord right now. This is what the devil's doing right now is he's bringing up, he's saying yes, but, and he's bringing up either something you've done recently or something you did a long time ago. So, some he's bringing up something that has shame involved in it and he's reminding you of that saying no that's not for you because of this and this is what the holy spirit is saying jesus took your shame and your sin on the cross he took all of it this is for you this promise was for you every single promise of god is yes and amen in jesus christ every single one not everyone except for the one you lost when you made that mistake no every single promise is yes and amen in, in jesus christ if you just move forward in Jesus and you can say back to the devil when he starts to bring those thoughts up, you know what, Satan, I'm, I'm not even going to try to ride through this on my own. I'm not even going to try to overcome this on my own. I'm just going to grab onto the cross and I'm just going to show you what Jesus did again. And I'm going to let that be my ticket forward. I'm going to let that be my pass forward into the future that God has for me. Because it always is. It always is. There's nothing else. There's no other reason that we deserve God's grace. It's always what Jesus did. And that is where, you know, it says, who the Son says free is free indeed. It also says that there's freedom in the Holy Spirit, in the presence of God. Right. That's where that connection point happens. You know, the freedom in the Holy Spirit. We're always looking for freedom in the Holy Spirit. That only happens when we our freedom is based on what Jesus did. It's based on the blood of Jesus. It's already on the altar. It's still there. It's still working. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you were talking, I, uh, when we were praying, I, I heard Revelation 10, 6. So I went to go look it up because I felt the Lord saying uh, that there's some of you, and I've and I've dealt with this before. There's, there's, there's this spirit of delay. There's this demonic assignment for delay in your life. I actually just cast out a, a, a demon from a, a man last night. And... Wow. Uh, the demon spoke out of it. I said, what's your assignment on his life? The demon spoke out, delay. Mm. I want to cause delay in his life. And I said, how do you do that? And he and, and it began to tell that that, that it, it, its its goal was to delay his entire life. Mm. <laughs> and so when we drove the demon out, praise wow. God, hallelujah, the guy got totally delivered. It was beautiful. And then the Holy Spirit gave me the scripture and it's Revelations 10, 6. Now I know the context is, <laughs> speaking about you know eschatology but this is what it says it says then the angel i had seen standing on the sea and on the land lifted up his right hand to heaven and he swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and everything in it the earth and everything in it the sea and everything in it there will be no more delay 
Hallelujah. So we pray in the name of Jesus that that angel that was released upon the earth that will call that swears by heaven that there will be no more delay let there be no more delay in your life in the mighty name of jesus let there be no more delay that you would not uh that, that god will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten that god will give you in the first month the former rain and the latter rain that was due unto you that you would find yourself pushed forward into the purpose and destiny that you were supposed to be in already but that god would accelerate you into it now now remember when i say acceleration that means trials and testings are accelerated as well so praise god that you will go through greater trials greater testing because count it all a joy when you encounter these things that it will perfect your faith that you would be made perfect and lacking in nothing so we prophesy over you in the mighty name of jesus that there will be an acceleration of times an acceleration of seasons an acceleration of trials to get you perfected in your character that you may be perfect and lacking in nothing and you would step into the fullness i prophesied this uh, over a live stream over a young girl once and the spirit of the lord told me to prophesy to her that there had been a delay in her uh, her acting career there was a demonic mm -hmm. delay in her acting career over on wow. live stream i prophesied over her and she she testified to us that ever since that prophetic word was released she has gotten tons of offers in her in her acting career and her acting career has taken off ever since and she's able to use the position in acting to win souls and share the gospel with people wow. in, that, in that industry so i prophesied to you that if you would be willing to be a vessel of honor and share the gospel and be a light in whatever career path, in whatever industry, in whatever occupation, or even in ministry, that I declare unto you acceleration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. I'm going to end this in a few minutes, but I'm just going to worship the Lord a little bit. If you're, if you're listening, this is what I want you to do. I want you to worship the Lord. You don't have to sing with me if I'm singing or whatever. I want you to worship the Lord and I want you to wait expectantly for that word in due season. And this is what I believe. And I just feel the wind of the Holy Spirit on this right now as a confirmation that the Lord is saying, yes, he's going to speak. He's going to give you that clarity and that confirmation you need to move forward in faith. And in some cases to wait, like some, and, and for some people, the Lord is saying, wait, that this is a season of uh, not trying to make things happen, but instead just waiting upon the Lord. And so I'm just going to worship Jesus right now. And I believe that God's going to begin to speak. And out of this, I believe some people may receive a prophetic gift. You may, uh, God may try to ignite a, a prophetic ministry or something like that. But you don't have to get caught up with all of that, with what's actually happening. Just wait upon the Lord. Just talk to him and let him speak to you. He's your good father. He's your friend who never leaves you. He, he The Holy Spirit is always there with you if you know jesus he's always there he's and jesus said that uh he would uh the help when the helper comes he'll explain all things to you he wants to be your counselor he wants to be your guide jesus i just love you so much i'm just so grateful for for your goodness and your grace and i'm so grateful for your voice thank you jesus that you're the good shepherd that we're the sheep and that your sheep hear your voice that we can hear you speak lord because just because we know you based on what you've done for us. Oh, I exalt thee. I exalt thee, Jesus. And I exalt thee, O oh Lord. We exalt you, King Jesus. Oh, I exalt thee, Jesus, and I exalt thee, oh, I exalt thee, oh, Lord, you're so lovely, Jesus, you're so gentle, you're so kind. You're so gracious. And I exalt thee, Jesus. And I exalt 
ti Oh I exalt thee Oh Lord Oh I exalt thee I exalt thee I exalt Thee, O my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Y'all, I just, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, I'm speaking to my saints. I'm speaking to my saints. And sometimes to to just, to hear his voice in those moments where it, it feels like a dry season, it just takes waiting upon the Lord. You see that all through scripture. It just takes waiting upon the Lord. And we can enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise, you know, but sometimes it's just, I'm here and I'm waiting. I'm just waiting upon you, Lord. And sometimes we're so desperate for that specific answer, that specific word, we miss what God is actually saying. (sighs) (laughs) Mm. so good well y'all make sure you go subscribe if anyone's still watching this (laughs) go subscribe to nelson's channel i'm gonna put a link below yeah if if if, um you can got you guys can go ahead and click the link and or search the glory revival that's our youtube channel but if you want to go to the glory revival.com all our links are there as well um as information to uh, the glory revival hub and our revival services that we do every saturday night here in dallas yeah if y'all are close to that area or you're ever in dallas go check it out too that would be awesome i think that'd just be uh just man fantastic i need to go i need to come sometime nelson i'm not gonna make any promises because i try not to do that but i will i do want to come well we'll bring you to come speak one of these days so don't worry about oh dude that'd be awesome that'd be, that'd be so cool i don't i don't need to do that to come though i just need to get over there but uh all right man well thank you so much thank y'all for joining me i know this is a long video but it really felt like it's what the holy spirit was leading us to do so we're just wanting to be obedient um i hope you've enjoyed this and i love you and i'll see you next time